Honey, I'm home. Oh, I forgot, I'm not married. According to our research, Food Fight is one of the worst, if not the worst, animated film of all time. Worst? Like, worst worst? It only came out last year, but it seems to be growing an underground following at a surprisingly rapid rate. If our data serves correctly, this flop could be as popular as The Room and Birdemic combined. It could easily be the next big thing. Only a few online critics have reviewed it so far, which means its potential can still be milked like a lactating Clarabel cow. Wait a minute. So you're saying that if I jump aboard the bandwagon before it even becomes a bandwagon, I could be one of the frontrunners of the bandwagon? Potentially. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna be at this air one of the most popular bad anime films of all time. I wouldn't be too hopeful, Critic. Here's a video of the last person who tried to review this movie. Oh, I'm sure he's fine. Keep checking those numbers! It's the least you can do to indulge the brilliant intellectual minds I decided to write for you all of a sudden. Well, it's a little hard to talk about this piece of shit without addressing its background. The film was supposed to be sort of the Wreck-It Ralph of food icons, combining copyright characters often seen in grocery aisles. It was also supposed to come out in 2002, but due to production problems, copyright issues, and even somebody stealing the footage, Really? Somebody wanted to steal this? The film was tinkered, altered, and pushed back to ten years later. But thank god ten years doesn't make a difference to such Hollywood giants like Hilary Duff, Chris Kattan, Eva Longoria, and 24-7 Dodger of Controversy Charlie Sheen. I'm sure all these people will be just as big in 2012 as they were in 2002. You'll be sorry! There's even reports that apparently $65 million went into making this stinker. $65 million?! Well, maybe it'll be like Waterworld, where at the very least the size and scale of the production can be impressive. So, let's find out by taking a look at Food Fight! Good night, Mr. Leonard. Don't work too late now. Just closing up. Nothing much happens around here after dark. $65 million, folks! Clearly the money is on the screen! By God, look at this! How could that amount of money go into something that's so shitty looking? What? Was somebody actually deranged enough to team up Uwe Boll and Tommy Wiseau as this film's budget accountants? The money laundering from this must be a loophole black hole! So we see a store closing down for the night called Marketopolis Market. Redundant much redundant? When the real world opens up inside. 
I'm not exactly sure how this works. If the store actually transforms at night, or if Marketopolis is a state of being. But this world exists and can only be described as what your nightmares would look like if they never rendered properly. I am so excited to... Uh -oh. And at the foreground of this world is Charlie Sheen's character, Dex Dog Detective. Hey, hairless hamsters. Want some of this? <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Boy, have the Ratchet and Clank games really gone downhill. But actually, it's just Dex saving a bunch of kittens from a villain that, like in most bad movies, won't connect to anything else in the plot. It is you, the great Dex detective who's about to take a fall. If I had a raisin for every time I've heard that one. Hey, what? My mother would be so ashamed. Okay, it's just you and me, fat cat. Now four Wait a minute. What was that character's name? Listen up, fat cat burglar. I'm giving you one last chance. Okay, first of all, Disney, sue something. Second, is the movie actually so stupid that it can't tell the difference between a rat and a cat? I mean, look at that thing. It's so fucking obviously a rat. $65 million and they can't even tell the difference between a rat and a cat? Is it kind of a no-brainer you don't give $65 million to a person who would fail a Fisher-Price Barnyard Animals game? The kitty cat goes... Squeak, squeak! Give him all our money! Clearly we're dealing with artistic genius here! I pooped myself. Give him an extra grand for that. So the kittens are saved by McGruff the Crap Dog. For the record, I was also considering Indiana Bones. And he heads on over to, what else? His sassy black sidekick. Chill, dog. You think you're talking to? Relax, bro. Oh, pizza. No, I told you, dog. Great idea. You my man. Brought to you by the leftover racism from Transformers 2. As Wayne Brady has this frightening combination of teeth and fever dreams, who gets excited when he learns that Dex is going to ask his sweetheart to marry him. Who is his sweetheart? I knew you'd find me. What the fuck is that? That scariness is apparently Sunshine Goodness, played by Hilary Duff, a cat mascot for raisins created by a designer who clearly has to ask himself more questions about his sexuality. Hungry, tough guy? Hiya, kitten. How about we get Chef Boyardee to make us a huge feast among us dinner? And yes, I too realize that she looks much more like a human and practically nothing like a cat. Are cats hard to draw? Did a cat snub you at a party so you refuse to portray them on any form of film? The idea of them getting married gets Daredevil Dan so touched that he cries pellets. I don't know. But Sunshine has to head out before Dex can pop the question. Don't worry, it'll just be a minute. Save my ice cream, I'll be right back, okay? Yeah, I'm just gonna put this on ya. We all know that's pretty much what you're saying. Sure enough, she does disappear, and six months later, Dex gives up the dog detective business and decides to open up a club called the Copa Banana. While that's going on, a salesperson played by Christopher Lloyd comes in, and what the hell am I looking at? I'm your new brand X representative. I wasn't expecting any new products. Your customers won't know how they live. With our brand hacks. Okay, this went from submitting a stick figure to an art museum embarrassing to shitting your pants in front of Pixar claiming it's your magnum opus embarrassing. Corporate. But we'll see how that turns out. But what the fuck's going on here? Oh, I'll make space. It's practically addictive. Survival of the fittest. Leather. Was it... Really somebody's dream to give a personality to mask number five from the Dark Knight? What? Would you trust a guy if he was selling something and looked and acted like this? Good evening, madam. Can I interest you in my product? It's called Evil Poison Bites Death. Um, I'm sorry, that doesn't seem like a product I'd be interested in. Oh, come now. It'll provide your business with the wholesome, attractive image of Satan's anus that it so desperately needs. I'm going to knee you in the crotch if you don't leave right now. That's just what the Jehovah's Witness said. <laughs> be honest, I came on too strong, didn't I? 
So the grocery store owner, of course, agrees to such a puppy dog looking man and Brandax begins to be brought into the store. Back in Sam and Max hit the sauce, we see Dax makes his way to Casa de Cameo, which is the hangout for big name icons like Mr. Clean, Charlie the Tuna, and the California Raisins. The funny thing is that the people who obviously said no to using their product icons in this movie all have really ugly, really bitter substitutes that, I guess, are trying to stick it back to the people who denied the use of their image. Like, this is their version of Chiquita Banana. Do I look like the Dairy Queen to you? And this is obviously supposed to be the Keebler Elves. I hate you! No, soon! Get in. The Brawny Man. <laughs> And gee, a chocolate cereal vampire? I wonder who that's supposed to be. Chocolate vampire used to have cards. You're looking pretty good for biting it. Most of them are portrayed as either stupid, ugly, or not very helpful. It's kind of like the movie's way of saying, oh yeah, you missed out, guys. You too could have been in a movie where farting is the highlight and people trip into other people's butts. I think we know who the losers are in this deal. <laughs> Give him another grand. And I guess the representative of Brand X in this world is Lady X. A supposedly sexy seductress with the dead, lifeless eyes of a plastic blow-up doll and a personality just as interesting to match. Of all the produce bars and all the supermarkets and all the world, she had to walk into mine. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, every scene that has Dex in it has to end in a bad pun. And I know what you're thinking, oh, Nostalgia Critic, you say every about everything, but no, literally, every scene ends with a bad pun. Time to banana split out of my club. My problems are just a hill of coffee beans. Let's snap, crackle, and pop out of here. How the ho-hos can this be happening? I don't know if I can cut the mustard. I've got a bone to pick with this guy. Holy chips. It sure does a body good. Some of them don't even make a lick of sense. Let's strawberry jam out of here. And the only thing more demeaning than that is all the sexual innuendos. Oh yeah, there's a ton of those in this too. I want to scrub your bubbles, Dad. It warms my heart the way you love my raisins. She's got a real sweet tooth for chocolate! You already eat through to his hollow center. Are those melons real? There are some stains you can never wash out. Dance your man! Melts in your mouth, not in your hands! Because a movie like this clearly needs that adult edge for the audience they're obviously going for. What can I say? Chicks dig chocolate. Like there's some grown-up somewhere watching this movie with their kids saying, Hmm, well I was gonna turn this off and not expose my child to such a piece of shit, but then it acknowledged I'm a pervert in a way that my kid won't understand. This movie gets me. The innuendos are so many and so strange, you have to wonder if the director had some sort of other sexual agenda on his mind. Crying over spilt milk. This is a fetish film! Between the innuendos, the cat lady, and the fact that every outfit this woman wears, even a dominatrix would say is too silly, fetish film. And by the way, plaid gloves? Really? The design is so weird that creates the illusion that her hands are on backwards. On top of that, it looks like her arm is melting in Al Borland's shirt. Is this actually a popular thing and I just never noticed? You've been through the wash plenty. I can see it in your eyes. So Dex starts to notice something along with stereotype number 20 here. Are you saying what I think Shoes is saying? Hey, what's you Italians getting upset about, sis? That being that Lady X is starting to rub out the other characters. Oh, you have to help me, Dex, before I go bald! Not that bald isn't beautiful! I don't get involved. Really? Mr. Clean showed up just for that one joke. He wasn't even around in the rest of the scene, and suddenly he appears when they said the word bald, and now he's just stuck there. Look at him! He's just standing around like, uh, is there anything else you wanted me to do? Was I really just a pawn in your lame-ass little punchline? I have a PhD in physics, perhaps I could educate the young children watching about fluid or solid mechanics or... Uh, or I'll just look over here. Yeah, I'm sure I'll show up when you make another boob joke. Shouldn't take long. So Dex decides it's time to go get some answers from the street. Everybody seems to be searching for- Oh my god, his dick's talking! His dick's talking! That's it! Game over, man! Game over! Mayhaps a reward for the reckless rodent? Tell me you wouldn't be shocked if they went that direction! But this dish is extra spicy. Yeah, something else you'll notice is the motion capture arm acting. I guess because the expressions in this movie are 
non-existent, all the acting comes through how much the characters awkwardly wave their arms. It's like watching C-3PO have a seizure, but even he somehow would have more expression on his face than these guys. Not that bald isn't beautiful. All 2 d 2 where are you? So Dex and Dan go to get some answers from, you won't believe this, another scary demon of hell. God! Why not Dr. Pepper, Dr. Anybody but I'm just gonna close my eyes and pray it goes away. Elixir. Brandex! No, it only got worse. <laughs> well, at least they're not pulling the ultimate insult by giving him a stereotypical Jewish accent. But it's in the expiration station, and at the other end of the store, now you'd never make it there before the supermarket opens. It's daytime! Are there any other groups you like to insult? I mean, the human race is so vast and full of variety, I'm sure you can find the black face of every single person on the planet. In fact, why even focus on a group? Why not just show us ugliness in any shape or form? You're good at that! Don't even give a reason! Just use it in this scene where they now physically exist in the store, again adding no continuity to how the fuck this world works, and just throw in whatever terrible, ungodly thing comes out of your head- Oh, Larry, I am not- What? 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 Me? I think we need a break. Here's some commercials. For the love of God, don't make a movie out of them! So they come across a mascot who's a chocolate vampire for a chocolate cereal. Clearly, this is supposed to be Captain Crunch. I am the undead, all right? The undead. You know, you, you, you're not dead, but you're not exactly living either. It's sort of like being in summer school. <laughs> oh, come on, that's funny. Now that's funny. Let's not lose our senses of humor. You have to have one before you can lose it. So they decide to get all the brands together to stop the evil Lady X and her Brand X army. But not before her head of the guards tries to shut down the Cocoa Banana. And unless you care to suffer a long, cruel expiration, you will sing your allegiance to Brand X. Oh no, they got Tim Curry in on this too. Why, Tim? Why? I was seeing if I could do anything more demeaning than saying Ducks Rock. This is a very clear sign that I can. Brand X, Brand X, it's simple and plain. Brand X, Brand X, it's different but all the same. But Dex comes in and starts singing their triumphant song. The French National Anthem. Gee, this scene looks familiar. In a way that, unless you saw the original movie, this would make absolutely no sense whatsoever. And it's extremely unlikely any little kid would have seen this movie, so this probably makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. If you haven't guessed it yet, they're clearly paying homage to barbed wire. Look, I know it's Pamela Anderson's greatest performance, but it's unlikely most children have viewed its genius. So he comes back with a bigger army, and it looks like their battle has just begun. Come and get me, baby. He's on the roof! Get him! Jazz hands! Jazz hands! Jazz hands! Jazz hands! Wow. Absolutely outstanding detail. 
<laughs> Surely they must have asked Pixar to do this breathtaking work of genius. Actually, they did. And after reading the script, not only did they send this terrible animation as a joke, but they also attached a handwritten note saying, go fuck yourself, signed by John Lasseter. But the director was so lazy, he used the clip anyway. And wow, look at this amazingness. Surely they must have asked DreamWorks to have this incredible work done. Actually, they did. And after they read the script, they sent them this bit in the face render, while also sending out a picture of Spielberg, Katzenberg, and Jeffen all mooning the camera and giving the finger. But again, the director was too lazy, so he used the clip anyway. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable wow. Surely such epic magnitude must have been asked to be done by Blue Sky Studios. Actually, they did! And they asked if they can turn it into a horrible franchise. Don't be shocked if you see this coming soon to a theater near you. Hey look, there's the Twinkie guy! I'm sure he's gonna do something really big and really important coming up. After all, he is one of the biggest characters on the poster, along with these other icons you've barely seen in the movie. Hell, Dex and Sunshine are one-third of their size. Surely all of them are gonna get together and do something huge in the movie's climax. Like, say nothing, pretty much do nothing, and take a back seat to graphics worse than the Money for Nothing video. And okay, a lot of you might be shouting, that's phenomenal false advertising in a film that is absolutely nothing but advertising. But this is incredibly common of even good films. Heck, I once saw a Star Wars poster where the main focus was the mouse droid. And we all know what a gigantic part he played, right? The movie would have been nothing without him. Run while you can, Dex Dog Detective. For soon, I'll have you sitting up and begging for mercy. Exobites, fly! Launch out of my badge! There's enough fetish fuel in this movie for everybody! Dan and the others try taking flight to stop her as Dan is just doing stuff you don't do on an airplane. It doesn't connect to anything at all, it's just stuff. Look, here's a $65 million comedy. Perhaps you'd like to do something funny with it. So Dex makes it to Lady X's headquarters and discovers, big fucking shock, that she was behind Sunshine's disappearance the whole time. I'll just leave you to it. <laughs> Sunshine gets her hands untied, throws a raisin to Dex, which he uses as a weapon, so he can untie the hands we clearly just saw she untied herself. Oh. Well, this isn't very much fun, is it? I think I just wet myself. It feels rather nice. Oh. Fat dish movie. I'm sorry. I thought you were. I'm here. We're together. I never stopped believing in you, Dex. Uh, did she go blind since the last time we saw her? I don't think she's looked him in the face once during this scene. I never stopped believing in you, Dex. It is Dex, right? Unless Scooby-Doo took steroids and somehow fought his speech impediment. But the spastic 80s rocker enters their world, or... Was he always part of the world, or is he sometimes in the world and sometimes not? Or is this all just some sort of unique punishment program they use in the Matrix? And the entire town decides they have to bring him down. And now, finally, we learn the big, disturbing, shocking twist. The villain of the movie the whole time was... The villain of the movie. So you built yourself a human robot and recalled Sunshine, then you stole her essence to make your elixir for Brand X. No, just, no. All anyone ever wanted was that sweet Sunshine goodness. No one bought my beautifully genetically giant prunes. But how did you get in and out of the store? You're an Ike. Perhaps if I do more ballerina twirls, the answer will become clear. When you look like this, you can get them to do anything. But enough about me. Let's kill you! So we partake in more sex puns. Tell me something. 
Are those melons real? Some horrible CGI fighting. You're not so tough now. Look out, you almost convinced me of the illusion of animation. And we quite literally have a cat fight between the two attractive women of the film. The bimbo's mine. Get ready, lady, because I'm going to kick you where the sun don't shine. And then the hot furry chick kicks the ass out of the hot dominatrix, all while the men make wicked funny jokes about her melons. And then she gets turned into an ugly woman, proving once and for all that if you're an ugly woman, no good can come out of you. Oh, and there's uh, something having to do with Mr. Twinkie, Mr. Clean, a bunch of other products, but who cares? It's done! It's finished! My magnum opus for the horny, furry S&M cat fight boxing fanfiction forum is finally completed! All I have to do is submit it. Oh no! I just sent it to my big shot agent in Hollywood! I ruined! <laughs> Why the hell do they want $65 million for it? Sunshine chip slapped her back to ugly! Gross! All I ever really wanted was you! Well, you and world domination! Frankly, my dear, I don't give a spam. You know what just hit me? This is the movie that turned Charlie Sheen insane. I mean, really think about it. The timelines add up. He constantly had to be called back for redos. And if you had to return to this for 10 fucking years in a row, wouldn't it kind of make sense that you would start talking like this? It was epic. The run I was on made Sinatra, Flynn, Jagger, Richards, all of them just look like droopy-eyed, armless children. Good job, Boobite. Good job. So Sunshine agrees to marry Dex, a last minute message is thrown in for no reason. We saved each other because the secret is inside, inside all of us. <laughs> Whatever that means. And just when you think you're allowed to flee this cauldron of eye rape, they decide there's so much more funny they need to get out. I wanna see what's under that hat. I love you, kitten. We see things so much clearer. Hilarious. So that was Food Fight. Oh, for a minute there, I almost felt the tab. Why are you afraid to express your emotions? Charming. So that was Food Fight. I'm warm! I'm warm! No, wait. Yeah, no, I'm still a little cold. Here on the bright side. Nicely done. So that was Food Fight. You really cut the cheese on that Lieutenant Duck? doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, it does. A lot. But the point I'm trying to make is, whether it was made for $65 million or just $65, there is nothing to be proud of in this movie. Everybody should be ashamed for even acknowledging it exists. I feel like Beelzebub's ball sack just for drawing attention to it. The animation is the worst. They never look alive. The jokes are the worst. They never once get a laugh. The characters are the worst. They're all just stereotypes of stereotypes. The plot is the worst. It's a joke, literally. It's all written as a joke, but one with no good setup or punchline. It is one of the worst pieces of commercialized dog shit I have ever seen in my entire life. And given the roundup of movies I've done over the years, that's saying a lot. In fact, I don't think human hands could have made it. I think something much more horrendous and disrespectful had to pull its energy together and make something so awful. I just figured it out. The horrible CG animation, the awful stereotypes, the tremendously unfunny humor, the fact that everything in this movie is despicably awkward and unnatural. My God, I know who directed this film. Also need way more fart jokes, lots of more fart jokes. This is gonna be a glutter for the Food Fighter 2, huh? For hell's motherfucking heart, I stab at thee. Wait a minute. It is done, but the evil 
will never truly go away. This is the worst animated film I have ever seen. Hands down, no comparison. Its scars are left deep inside of me. Why did I do it? For you. I did it for you. Because I know that I have seen the worst. I know that no other form of animation will ever be worse than Food Fight. And because of that, I know for a fact that this film will forever, in the history books, always be seen as PASSE! Yep, since you started the review, the movie's popularity has already died out. But that was a fucking half hour ago! Well, that's practically five years in internet time. Yes, people knew it was going to be the next popular thing to mock. So they decided not to mock it at all. Wait, so the popularity of something can fade even before it becomes popular? Mm-hmm, we call it the hipster effect. Knowing something is going to be ironically cool suddenly makes it traditionally cool. So, to be ahead of the curve, they decide to not even make it ironically cool. Hell, even thinking about it probably cuts its lifespan in half. <sighs> so you're telling me that sitting through all this misery, the worst animated film of all time was- A complete waste of time. Sorry, buddy. And there's nothing I can do about it? Not unless you want to somehow do a review of the Attorney General of Crimea. She is on fire right now. Oh, she is adorable. Oh, I just want to eat her up. Oh, look, she smiled. <laughs> She's like the Jennifer Lawrence of warfare. <laughs> I just want to pinch her cheeks, but I respect her. critics foolish enough to think that they can review Food Fight. I won't lie to you about your chances. You have my sympathies. It will not leave you the same way it found you. Its scars run deep. If there is anyone out there damn insane enough to try and take on this film, all I have to say is be strong. Be brave. Survival of the fittest! Let